Hello and welcome. This is James from the DSO Imager channel. Tonight I'm going to show the processing workflow I used for a star cluster known as NGC 225. Now I do have a goal of shooting more star clusters than I have in the past. Uh, it turns out a lot of star clusters have some interesting structure in and around them and so uh, that's what I was looking for here with NGC 225. Uh, I actually captured this data over the summer and fall and uh, just hadn't gotten around to really uh, uh, putting an effort in to finish it. So it was a challenging target to process for me. So we've got the open star cluster. Uh, you're seeing the luminance uh, exposure right here. Um, there's our star cluster right here. We have a little bit of reflection nebula. This reflection part is known as uh, VDB4. And then there's a lot of dark nebula in here. And there's even some patches of faint uh, HA. Now the challenge really is related to my skies. I'm in Bortal 5 skies. Uh, they could be, uh, it, it, it's not bad, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot better than being stuck in a Bortal 7 like I was before I moved here but uh, there's still a significant amount of light pollution. Uh, and I've been wary to try dark nebula in my area, but I gave it a go this time. I collected 45 hours worth of LRGB data. Uh, the telescope I use is a uh, AT115 EDT, so 115 millimeter refracting telescope. And the, um, the uh, camera that I used is the venerable ZWO ASI 1600 Mono and the filters are Chroma LRGB. Alright, so anyway, let's take a look at the data. So here's the luminance, here's red, and you can already see that there's a gradient looking from this corner to this corner here. Uh, here's the green and the blue. Uh, I did take a good chunk of HA data, but I ended up not using it. Now, I may go back and try uh, to integrate the uh, HA, but I actually liked the colors I was getting on the LRGB, and you know, I didn't think I wanted to um, mess with the HA. You can see it doesn't line up either right here either. I would have to tighten the, the crop to make this fit. So, I don't know. I may go back and play with the HA, but for today, I just went straight LRGB. Okay, so first thing I did was run uh, dynamic background extraction against the luminance channel, and this is what I ended up with. So I made a clone here, and what you're seeing here is after dynamic background extraction, uh, we do use Blur Exterminator. And yeah, we'll zoom in here and take a look. So not a whole lot of neb nebulosity. Well, actually there is. There's a good bit of dark nebula in here. You can't see it very well, uh, but you'll see it after we get the stars out. All right, and uh, so here we go. Uh, so there, stars are out. And now we can get a kind of a hint here on just how much is in here. So there's actually quite a bit of dust here. Now one thing I got to show you, uh, this right here is an anomaly. This is an artifact. Uh, I don't know what happened. Something happened on my image train. I th have a feeling it's a spot on the front objective because every filter is showing this artifact. and. Um, Flats had trouble correcting this out. Uh, so you'll see uh, in the workflow, but I tried different methods in the past of trying to make filters and match in the background, and I just ultimately used the, uh, the healing brush in Photoshop to take care of it. It was the best way to get rid of that. And I did stretch it using GHS. It's a generalized hyperbolic stretch, and here's what we got. Alrighty, so let's take a look at the color. I use the LRGB combination tool to combine the uh, red, green, and blue, and this was the output. So yeah, that uh, 
that gradient's rough. And you can really get an idea of just how bad it was. Yeah. All right, so what I did is the, the way I processed the RGB data is that I ran dynamic, excuse me, I ran blur exterminator and used the correct only option. So what the correct only option does is it um, it cleans up the stars in the corners and uh, it, it almost does kind of like an RGB align. It's, it's, there's some separation especially with this particular scope in the blues and uh, this correct only cleans that up. It doesn't eliminate it completely but it helps a lot. Uh, so after doing the correct only adjustment to it uh, next step is to run dyna dynamic background extraction. Uh, then after that, it's do an image anal image solver using this script right here. All right, so do a search, put in NGC two two five, and uh, after you solve the image, you then uh, oops. <laughs> I kicked it off. Uh, but after you solve the image, what you do after that is um, you then use color correction and I use the uh, spectrochromatic color correction. Uh, this one here. That one. And then after applying the, the color correction, then I would go back to Blur Exterminator, uncheck this, and then apply. And I would use the same value that I used on the luminance. Now, it, I had to run through this color a couple of times to get the gradient pretty good. But you can see kind of how bad it is. Well, this is not too bad. It, I had one that was worse than this. But uh, still, we got some green. Here's that terrible uh, artifact over there. And I think this, yeah, this image 35, I think, was the second attempt at getting this uh, color data right. Yeah, so there's Blur Exterminator. And uh, not stretched yet. Oh, okay, so the RGB is where it's stretched. All right, so here's the color data. This is after applying Blur Exterminator. Next was to remove the stars, this time saving the stars because we're going to use just RGB stars when we put them back in there. Um, then you can see I applied a strong uh, noise reduction to eliminate color noise because all our details in the luminance, that's all we really care about for detail. Uh, and then next, there we go, stretched. So this is the RGB data stretched. I actually just used GHS when I stretched the um, uh, the luminance data. I saved the process and then just applied it to the color data. I don't know if that's the best way to do it, but uh, I think it worked pretty well because this is what it came out to after adding the luminance. So other other than this terrible thing here, <laughs> it it actually looks pretty decent. So, I mean, at this point, it was pretty much uh, just kind of a little bit of curves work. Oh, so you see what I did here? Uh, so a little bit of curves work right there, more curves work. And now I made a mask because this area, this reflection area is blue. There's barely any blue coming through here. I think it's because the luminance was pretty strong. And... Um, so I actually attempted to process this in image a couple of times last year. And it's the reason I sat on the data, because I had a hard time uh, getting the color out. Um, so uh, this time I decided to make a mask, and then I just used curves uh, to give us a little bit of blue in there. And now you can see the noise reduction. And for noise reduction, I just used uh, Noise Exterminator. So that did a really good job. 
All right, so next I took this image into Photoshop and I did a few things. I applied uh, that uh, healing brush to get rid of this. And, uh, and then I also used the camera raw filter to tweak the colors, tweak the contrast. I used the dehaze and clarity sliders. And uh, this is what I ended up with. So yeah, good difference there. It completely fixed uh, this artifact. And um, yeah, co co color and contrast is much improved now. So you can really see this, uh, all this dark nebula here. Now I wanted to do some stuff with this as far as the colors were concerned. The HA is looking close to magenta. I wanted to move it closer to red. I wanted to, there's some green left over in here. And while I like green in my narrowband images, I'm not a fan of green in uh, my broadband images. <laughs> and this blue uh, background, I think that's an artifact as well. And I wanted to get rid of the blue, right? These are probably artifacts from uh, stars. I don't think this is really supposed to be blue in this area. So that's what you're going to see here. I got a mask on here. Uh, this is a mask that I used um, uh, the um, color mask mod script. So uh, this one here. This is a great mask uh, generator tool. All right, so let's hide the mask and step through the changes. So you can see I'm increasing red. Uh, we got rid of the blue, yeah. So there's the blue, mostly in here. It's like these areas in this spot here. I want to kind of neutralize it, and there you go. So, and we pretty much ended up here. Now, as far as the stars go, really all I did is I just gave them a little bit of a stretch. Uh, let's see. We'll step through it. Yeah, so a little bit of a stretch. The main thing was I wanted these larger stars uh, to stand out. And of course, when I'm stretching manually and then increasing saturation, right, the colors are thrown off. We're getting some purples and greens in there. So what I usually end up doing is I'll invert and subtract green and there so stars look pretty good now and I put the two together and I believe this uh, was the first pass so if you're one of my regular subscribers and uh, you uh, catch the community posts that I make I, sh I shared this picture a couple nights ago and this is the version that I shared so this was the I called it my first pass at this data. So when I got to this point, I did take a break. Now, I usually give my images a full 24 hours. Uh, but really, the way it worked this time, I found myself home alone Saturday morning. My wife was at work. My daughter was at work. So it was a quiet Saturday morning, and I processed this image. Um, and so I, let, I stepped away from it, and then I came back uh, probably midnight or so and um, decided to rework this image a little bit. I was overall pretty happy with this. I just wanted to tweak the color of the red a little bit to get it still closer to red and further away from magenta and um, maybe improve the contrast a little bit. So I'll just show the different versions that I came up with. So here's one. Uh, the next version was this, so I thought maybe I'd go warmer on the color, and you can see a pretty significant difference here with the warmth. Uh, we are seeing more contrast in this area, but um, I thought it was maybe too warm, and so here's the fourth version. And this is the version I decided to go with. So I think the contrast is a little bit better here. Uh, it's probably 
kind of splitting the difference between these two. All right, so there you go, NGC 225. It's a open star cluster that happens to be in a very busy area with lots of dust. It's kind of cool. We've got a mix of a dark nebula with a little bit of reflection nebula and some uh, ionized hydrogen in the background. Um, 45 hours worth <laughs> from a Bortle 5 backyard. So overall, I'm happy. Um, I'm, I'm thinking I may take a chance and do some more dark nebula type targets from my backyard. We'll see how it goes. Uh, the darkest part of my backyard is west. Uh, north is also pretty good. Uh, the east and south are terrible. <laughs> so uh, let me know what you guys think. Let me know which uh, edit uh, you prefer. I mean, they're, they're all very similar, so it probably doesn't matter. Um, and let me know if you guys are thinking of tackling any kind of dark nebula or open star clusters uh, this year, especially for folks that are living in um, moderately light polluted areas. All right, uh, don't forget to hit the like button. If you're not already subscribed, click that subscribe button and uh, clear skies.